So we are toward the end of the book, book four, the quest, Canto four, quest. Hundred point one. <clears throat> the poet is kind of rounding up the long description of Savitri's travel through different parts of the country, through different places, palaces, capital cities, villages, urban areas, suburban areas, forest, inland, recesses and things like that. And Savitri has been traveling almost for one year, from place to place, almost for one year. Essentially, in fact, here itself I got uh, a specific mention of Savitri's travel. Hundred point twelve. The months had fled, fed the passion of the sun. The months had fed the passion of the sun. And now his burning breath assailed the soil. So it is almost at the beginning of the summer, Savitri had set on the journey and it is coming to an end now, almost again in summer. So, roughly almost for a year, Savitri has been going from place to place. There is a very pertinent description again in 106.31. Sorry, 106.66. To whom the king, the red Ashoka, washed her going forth, which now sees her return. Now this is in the context of Nara's visit to Ashopati, when Savitri is about to return to the palace after meeting Satyavan. And when Savitri enters the palace, she sees her parents in the company of Narad. Narad looks at her, he knows everything, and sort of innocently, he asks the host, who is this who comes, the bride? Where has she gone? Why is it that you have not yet got her married? I mean, this is the kind of a question Narada is asking to the host, to Ashwapati. And it is in response to that, Ashwapati replies, the red Ashoka washed her going forth, which now sees her return. Now, the red Ashoka is the plant, is the tree at the gate, at the entrance of the palace. So Savitri is driving through the palace and gate and she has set herself on the quest. So it is the red Ashoka who is bidding her by. And now it is that red Ashoka who is receiving her back. That tree is receiving her back. Now red 
Ashoka, it means the flower, the flower, the color of the flower is red and normally it blooms in the summer. So in the summer, the red Ashoka saw her going. Now again, the red Ashoka is she is coming her back. So it means that roughly Savitri has been traveling, has going, is going from place to place for one year in the search of her life partner. And then of course, she meets etc etc all that will follow. So uh, it is uh, this long journey which is described in the present canto of Savitri, how she is going from different to different places, where she is staying and what she is doing. And now the poet is kind of rounding up the whole uh, journey of Savitri scene. So as flows a sunbeam through a shady place, the golden virgin in her car one car came gliding among meditation's seeds. Now the comparison of Savitri's going in chariot from place to place is with the sunbeam, ray of the sun, to the forest, the way the sun goes, sunbeam travels from one region to the other region, as if she is going from the one forest land to the other forest land. In that manner, Savitri is a sunbeam going from place to place to the thickets of life and she is now coming back here. As flows a sunbeam, so it's a very gentle way of saying, she is not driving, she is not hasty with that thing. As flow uh, came gliding, gliding and float, they are about the same thing, you see. You glide down the staircase, you see, <laughs> very happily, briskly, without making noise, that kind of a thing. Same way, Savitri chariot, although it is with strong hooves, with strong wheels, and must be rattling on the way, but it is kind of gliding with gently from place to place, you see, Savitri playing. As flows a sunbeam to a shady place, the golden virgin in the car one car, came gliding among meditation seeds. We have seen earlier the description of various types of people or seekers of spiritual truth, spiritual life who live in the forest. King sages, hermits, ascetics, and then realized souls, the rishis. That whole long description we have seen in the previous uh, pages you see. Now Savitri is coming into another region where it is the place of meditation, where the rishis are staying and are absorbed in spiritual tapasya. That is the meditation seeds. Came gliding among meditation seeds, often in twilight, mid returning troops. Now, well, she has been going from place to place. So in the evening, what happens to Savitri? And he says, often in twilight, mid returning troops, the cattle are returning to the homes, back from the face, they're coming back. Or cattle thickening with the dust, the shades, when they are moving in the dusty places, they are kind of making the dust flow fly around they have seen. When the loud day has slipped below the words, loud active day with full of activity, when it has become quiet in the evening, it is in that manner Savitri is going. When the loud day has slipped below the words, below the words, coming below the horizon line, you see, means the sunset, basically sunset. Arriving in a peaceful hermit grove, they come back to the hermit grove for rest in the night. She rested, drawing round her like a clue. Savitri goes and stays in some hermit's place, in some ashram. Why is she going from place to place? Today here, tomorrow there, tomorrow there, like that. She goes and stays in different places, like that. Arriving in a peaceful hermit grove, she rested, drawing round her like a cloak. And what is she, what did she cover with? She is taking sleep. She, covers herself with a spirit of patient, mute and potent prayer. 
that is the cover that is the bed cover she is using the, the shawl or whatever or blanket or whatever to call it you see the patient views calm peaceful thought contemplative ideas and potent prayer prayer which is charge with some kind of a yearning some kind of a longing longing to the future longing to meet her future partner it is with that she is covering herself while she goes to sleep in the night sleep in the night and then what happens next or if not in the hermit places not in some ashram or near to a lion rivers tawny mane the yellow brown color of a rushing river and that is a tawny mane of the lion you see or near to a lion rivers tawny mane and tree that worshiped on a praying shore on the bank of the river the trees are there in fact it is a very beautiful prayer of the mother in the evening how the sap rises from the tree and then goes up in the evening as a kind of an offering very beautiful prayer of the mother is there for that and tree that worshiped on a praying shore a domed and templed airs serene repose so she would go and stay in some temple under the dome of the temple in the courtyard of the temple somewhere there she would go and stay a dome and temple airs serene repose beckon to her hurry ways to stay their speed yes now you can come here and take rest proper rest in the evening you see in the solemnity of a space that seemed a mind remembering ancient silences where to the heart great pagan voices call and the last liberty of roaring seer had left a long impress to their souls seen awake in candid dawn or dark and or, or darkness moon to the still touch inclined the daughter of flame drank in her splendor between tranquil lids and fell in the kinship of eternal calm so he is describing how savitri falls asleep basically you see in the night how she falls asleep drank in her splendor between tranquil lids her eyes are there tranquil cool and they are closing down and fell in the kinship so when she is falling asleep she feels the kinship with eternity the eternal calm is what really fills her atmosphere you see in solemnity of a space so that is the atmosphere of the forest where the rishis live where the spiritual tapasya is being done calm quiet serene and in the space a mind remembering ancient silences what does mind remember there in those spiritual places ancient silences we we'll talk about this in more detail where to the heart great bygone voices call the old voices they come back to the memory in those places where the tapasya spiritual practices are being done where to the heart great bygone voices call old voices they are speaking and the last liberty of roaring seers those who are absorbed in tapasya those seers the rishis it is in their liberty she is feeling and slipping into that atmosphere had left the long impress of their souls as seen they are there and it is that atmosphere which is filling the whole place completely the tapasya their peace left the long impress of the souls seen awake in candid dawn or darkness moon whether it is early morning or when the night which is dark but it is a moon there it is it is charged with the spiritual tapasya of those people and it is in that atmosphere savitri is slipping in is staying there you see and left a long impress their souls to sing 
awake in candid dawn or darkness moon to the still touch inclined the daughter of flame daughter of flame there is savitri she is the flame daughter she is agni kanya flame daughter flame agni kanya daughter agni kanya savitri is agni kanya and it is that agni kanya who is going to take rest in the night at this places why she is going from place to place to see actually okay we see that drank and has spent a bit when so therefore he is now you see what the way poetry moves is really beautiful very charming you see drank and has spent a bit when tranquil lids and fell the kinship of eternal calm obviously this is an atmosphere of serenity of calm of tranquility and it has the peace it has the tranquility of the eternal himself there because the spiritual presence is there of those people who are who are staying there who are staying there also you see and drank and has splendor between tranquil lids so it is the it is the eyes which are drinking of the splendor you see that light you see this sheer poetry absolutely marvelous you see now this line second line a mind remembering ancient silences is one of the most beautiful lines very powerful line it is again a line which is coming from a very high plane of overhead poetry a mind remembering ancient silences a mind remembering ancient silences it comes in a very smooth manner from somewhere and goes into somewhere the earlier two lines actually we have seen some of these earlier lines also yeah it comes in that line that class of lines is in see the earlier line which you have seen was this one to where mind motionless sleeps waiting lies birth that is the line we have seen earlier to where mind motionless sleeps waiting lies birth 99 99.45 second line there is also 99.45 to where mind motionlessly is waiting lies but mind is sleeping quietly waiting for what waiting the birth of light waiting for the birth of light that is again one of the topmost lines in savitri coming from the overhead point from the over mind itself upper <clears throat> to where mind motionlessly is waiting lies birth you can see the rhythm where from it comes and how it moves on it's very quiet and very grandly in the same sentence last line sighs sound is breaking from the soul to great deep sighs sound is breaking from the soul to great deep again another very powerful line sure over mind line all these three lines belong to the same class see savitri in terms of poetry has variations and it is not that throughout you have your over mind lines they are there there is a minimum level they all belong to the over head poetry but all of them are not over mind poetry in savitri and when you talk of mantra mantra belongs actually to the pure over mind plane the utterance coming from the over mind it is that which use mantra so therefore when we say savitri is all mantric that is an i will say kind of an exaggeration it is too much of enthusiasm on our part to say savitri is up 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 like that savitri has variation savitri has grace savitri is a narrative poem also but very very often you get lines like this which are absolutely coming from your mind plane properly there are passages long passages which definitely belong to our mind plane you see but throughout in savitri 
you have got in between like that lines sometimes of that kind not whole Savitri is not that type that we have to understand also you see. see to wear mind motionlessly is waiting lights birth sights sound with breaking from the soul's great deep breaking from the soul's great deep sights sound with breaking from the soul's great deep it is in the same class you have got here this line also a mind remembering ancient silences a mind remembering ancient silences it comes from a different reason altogether.